us and make us better Christian. Prepare us for the great day, the day of the rapture. Because this is the greatest event as Christian that we are still waiting for. Lord, we want to be part of the, the rapture. For that we need to be changed, transformed, washed, prepared, made ready by your word. We bind every power of darkness here in the name of Jesus. And we command them to leave this place so that every heart may be free to hear from you, to listen your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. May you have your seats. Thank you very much for coming this uh, evening to share the word of God. As I always say, um, the disciple, the Bible says, they were meeting every day in the houses to share the word, to break the bread, and to drink the cup. They were doing that on a daily basis. Now, beloved, I want you to understand that uh, our Wednesdays are teaching Wednesdays, and we, by the grace of God, make sure that uh, now that we know the will of God, we want every Wednesday to be taught properly. The reason why we are doing that is because there is a watch. The world have a watch. You know, recently the Lord was telling me about watch. Maybe this, one, this Sunday we'll talk about watch. That was going to be our turn. So watch. The Lord was telling me about the watch. The watch that we see, that we look at the time, but also the watch is an attitude of a person toward a situation to be watchful. A watch shows you the time and to every time is linked an event or an issue or a problem or something. That's why we have time. You know, we say six o'clock is going to be our time of prayer. So once six o'clock, we reach six o'clock, there's an event that's linked to that time. So there is a watch in the world. The world has a watch. And the watch of the world is called Israel. Israel is the watch of the world. Through Israel, we can see what time we are in the watch of God. I'm not speaking about this time, this watch that we are wearing, you know, that says that it's 18 hours, but I'm speaking about the watch of God. Remember Jesus said that that time of him coming, many people, they don't know that time. But there is a time. He gave us a watch and gave us approximately what time that thing should happen. That's why we really need to be careful and to be watchful on Israel. I don't know if you're watching news. I am watching news. And uh, <laughs> what is happening in Israel is prophetical. I'm not speaking about Israel, but I want just to bring an awareness to you. What is happening to Israel is prophetical. Yesterday, there was more than more than 100, to be precise, 181 missile, missile that was uh, shot from Iran that came to Israel. And uh, I was telling my, my kids that uh, Israel, they have what we call a iron, um, iron dome that intercept all those mi missile for it to not. They are allowing some if they know that it's going to go to a place where people are not living. But in reality, it's not those things that are protecting Israel. It's the hand of God that is upon them and protecting them. But now, here is the, 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 the catch there. The catch is where things are going. If Israel start to become weak, if Israel start to give up, if Israel start to being um, to be conquered, then it means that the Lord is about to come. 
Because here is the problem, the issue. Israel will be conquered and will be made slave by these people. They will conquer him. But before him to be conquered, the church must be raptured. Because it's the, it's the spirit of the Lord that is still protecting Israel and all of us. That's why Satan cannot work easily because there is the spirit of the Lord which is still in the world, in you, in me. We are still screaming the name of Jesus. That's why they cannot conquer. But in the prophecy, it is written, after the rapture of the church, Israel will be what? Conquered. So now, when I told you is a watch, is when you see that people are start bombarding Israel and they start, remember Israel is surrounded by five enemies, five of them. And all of them, they are heavily armed. But every time Israel beats them, the moment Israel will start to be beaten, you must prepare yourself because our king is about to come. Because before him to be captured, the church must go. That's what I told you is a watch. So if you are a, a watchful Christian, you should watch what is happening to Israel. I was talking to Pastor Ndagano and Mbangang telling them that, guys, what is happening there? <laughs> we need to prepare. It is no, no longer for long. Because how long they are going to resist? If China and Russia just get into the battle, it's finished. And United States, how long is going to support them? Because the pressure is going to be too much that he will leave Israel. This is what the prophecy says. So if you know the prophecy, you must know that what is happening, things very soon, very soon, very, very soon, our king will appear in the air. So if you still have things to repair in your life, you better repair them now. If you still, you still have hidden life, if you still, you still have hidden things, if you still live in the life that you know very well that this life I'm living is going to take me to hell, you better change. Because if you miss the rapture of the church, it's going to be terrible for you. Because you will know that I've missed it. Because the rapture of the church will be a worldwide event. It, they will speak about it everywhere. Because there will not going to be any, any, any way for the journalist to hide this event. Because it will happen everywhere. It will happen in the media. It will happen in the, you know, um, politics. It will happen in the parliament. It will happen in the, in the politics. It will happen everywhere. It will happen. Now imagine when it will happen. We won't be able to hide it anymore. I mean, not, not us, <laughs> because I'm not going to be there. They won't be able to hide it. They'll come to Benning Wabo Church. We are gone. Chica will realize that the wife is gone, or the husband is gone, or the parents are gone. You are left alone. Who's going to pay school fees for you? Imagine. Children are left. Both parents are gone. Who's going to pay school fees for you? You'll end up accepting the mark of the, the beast. Are with me, people of God? I am not telling you this to make you, to make you, to, to, you know, to, 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 to make you fear, to be afraid. No, this is not an event to be afraid of. It's an event to pray, to wait for it to arrive. You know, sometimes when I'm, I'm, in, I'm in pain, I like, ah. This body anyway, very soon, will get rid of it. You know, sometimes I'm having pain on the feet, you know, like, Ish, what this again? And then something will tell me, don't worry, very soon you will leave this body. Will enter in the glory. Will enter the presence of God. Will be with the Lord in the air. And will sing a new song that he will give us. What we say, he will give us a new song. He'll put a song in our mouth. And you'll give us a new name that nobody knows. I can't wait to see that new name you'll give me. We have new names. Hallelujah. We'll sing new songs. When we'll enter there, we'll start singing new songs. No pain, no difficulties, no this and that. Yeah, nothing. No electricity. Yeah, it's calm. 
Then no has come. His light, his presence will be our light. Oh, don't miss that. Please tell your neighbor, don't miss it. I don't want to miss it. Guys, don't miss it. That way, correct your life. You see, the good thing with us Christians, we have the Spirit of the Lord. We have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is in you. He's able to tell you that what you are doing is wrong. Abide by the voice of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Spirit of the Lord is the, is the magnet that God put in us that will help us to be raptured. The Bible says that he who does not have the Spirit of the Lord does not belong to him. And the Bible says, do not quench the Spirit of the Lord because that Spirit was given to you for the day of your redemption or the day of your rapture. What will make us go is the Spirit of the Lord. If you quench the Spirit of the Lord or you don't listen to him, that day he will leave you. You'll be heavy. You won't be able to go because of the heaviness of your sins. Because of the heaviness of your rebellious life. I don't want nobody to be left behind that day here. I want this church to be empty. Yeah. When people will come here, the church is empty. Then people will be crying, oh, these people were right. But the Bible church, they were right. The pastor was right. He was telling us the truth. That day they will see that we were right about the rapture of the church. The rapture will take place, brother. The rapture will take place, sister. That way, prepare yourself. Every day, prepare yourself. Ask yourself, Lord, am I in the position to be raptured? Hallelujah. So look at Israel. I told you last, last night, they received 181 bomb. They resisted. If you start seeing that they start being broken, you know, they start hitting them, know that the next event is the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. So me, my role is to prepare you to that event. So that that day, when I will stand before my Lord, I tell him, Lord, look at the record of the, my preaching. I did not spend my time telling them about money, food, or whatever. But I told them about your coming back. So you won't tell me that I did not tell you. I'm telling you, prepare yourself. Stop distracting yourself. Be ready. Because it can happen anytime. I don't know why I'm insisting in this before me to go to my message. You see, if you don't know, the first rain that came on the world, it came in the time of Noah. That was the first rain. Before Noah, there was no rain. They didn't even know about rain. <laughs> All those Yes, they lived. They didn't know that there's a rain. They knew that there is water in heaven. There is water you know, on the sea and whatever. But they couldn't imagine water coming down. But that day, when Noah came to them and told them that, guys, we better be in the boat because there will be a rain. Many people did not believe because they never seen the rain before. Many people did not believe because they never seen rapture before. They are like, ah, oh, come on, man. What are you talking about? Come on. You know, people, those who are studying too much. Scientifically speaking, eh, molecularly speaking, biologically, my friend, your biological and molecular, God said that there will be a rapture. And he gave us three examples of a rapture to tell us that it will happen. Hallelujah. Amen. The time of Enoch, Enoch was raptured. Elijah was raptured. Jesus was raptured. In front of everyone, they saw him going up to tell us that it is possible. Jesus died, resurrected, and was raptured to show us this is what's going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you there will be rapture. Believe. Jesus said, Two people will be in the bed, on the bed. One will be taken, the other one will be left. I don't know the one who will be left. Now, I was explaining to the leaders, because that is a good thing. <laughs> you see, when we go to heaven, we're not going to have souls anymore. And God is right to take away our souls. We'll have only our spirit. 
Because if we have our souls, we'll feel. Imagine your wife is left. You're not going to be happy in heaven. You'll be crying to God, ah, my wife is left there. Oh, my children, my ch Imagine you're my children left. The pain I'll have in heaven. That's why you must remove you that thing. You'll have only your spirit. Spirit have no, no feelings. That's why the angel can destroy without any, don't feel anything. If God said, cut him the head, the angels can, no feelings. That's why, I don't know why am I speaking about this. This is not my message, but I need to explain to you. This is the reason why you see witchcraft. After killing a person, they cry too much during the day. You know why? Because when they go in the spirit, they, they, they don't go there with their soul. It's their spirit that goes there. And they decide to kill their father. That you can see, somebody decide to kill a person who take care, take care, takes care of them. Now when he comes back in the normal way, he has the soul. He's not having the feeling. Now he starts crying. How come? They lied to me. We have heard it many times in a, in a funeral where somebody is crying. Say, they lied to me. They, they told me to kill my father. Now he's going to take care of me. How they lie to you? Now you realize because you have the soul. But during the night, when they took you there, there was, you went there with your spirit. So there was no feelings there. That's why you could kill easily. Hallelujah. I pray if you are in the witchcraft, go out of witchcraft. Because what the devil does with you, you don't feel anymore because it takes you in the spirit where you do not have your feelings with you anymore. And you, you do wrong things. You kill people. You, you make people suffer. You, you send a spell on people. People are suffering. Come back. Come back to your senses. Stop witchcraft. And if they are following us online, you must stop witchcraft. Can't you see the difference? When you are back to your normal, you feel the pain of the people you are making suffer. It is because when they take you there, you do not have your spirit. Come back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be prepared. It's coming. It is coming. It is coming. Praise the living Jesus. So don't miss our great appointment. Every day we are living, we are, we are going toward the appointment. Our appointment is the rapture of church. Make sure. Read the Bible on a daily basis. Pray on a daily basis. Come to church. Live a holy life. If there is something that is too much you are trying, you cannot come and see us. Tell us, Pastor, this I'm trying, I can't get it out of my life. We'll pray for you. We're not going to uh, uh, mock you. We'll pray for you. So that those things can, must go away. We'll ask God. God, look at the will of this man. He wants this to go away. Please help him. And God will do that. Apostle Paul say, I can do all things. True. Christ. Who does what? Strengthens me. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ. Who? Strengthens us. Hallelujah. Now, during this month of October, we will be speaking about loyalty and betrayal. Loyalty. It is important for us to understand that being Christian, we need to be loyal to our master Jesus and loyal to the people that Jesus put in front of us. Being loyal to you cannot be loyal to Jesus if you are not loyal to the people who are representing Jesus. Don't take me wrong. I'm not only speaking about the pastors or the apostles. I'm speaking also about your husband is somebody that God put there to represent him in, your, in the house. I'm speaking about your parents. They are people that God put there. I'm speaking about the authority of your country. You see, so I'm not only speaking about being loyal or loyalty to your church leaders or to the church or to Jesus, but I'm speaking also being loyal to all form of God's representation that God has given us. Sometimes it's difficult for you to understand that your husband represents God in your family as well. Sometimes it's difficult for you to understand that your parents are representing God in your family. That your boss, he represents God in your family. This is how God made things. For you to understand that he, he is ruling or he is um, coming to you through people that he put there to represent him.
to make order on earth. Hallelujah. So as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we are required to be loyal, to live in loyalty, to be loyal to all those representation of God on earth. And I can tell you that the church today is suffering and the devil has understood that and is making pressure. We are betraying each other. No wonder Jesus speaking about the last day, he said that in the last day, people of the same family will betray each other. He was not only speaking about the physical family, he was speaking also the family of the children of God. How often have you never heard that a brother that you are fellowshipping together is the very same brother who goes out and destroy your life? Or a sister with whom you are fellowshipping together, she's the only one, she's the very same one who goes out and destroy you. How often have, we not, have you never heard that a, a pastor to whom somebody can put me that music, put me that music. A pastor to whom the, you come and tell your life and tell your difficulties, he is the one who is first to come and uh, disrupt your life on the pulpit. This is betrayal. Somebody trusted you and told you something and you take that thing and give it to someone. You see, I always tell people, younger pastor, that your wife if is not is not necessary is not necessarily a pastor your wife the wife of a pastor or the husband of a pastor is not necessarily a pastor so you cannot take everything that you receive and go and share with your wife or with your husband because you he, he was not given that heart to carry those things this is a mistake that many people are doing i have seen pastor's wife who were now um, aggressive to the church members because the pastor told this, the, the, womb, the, the wife or the husband what this and that has done. Do you know that brother? He came to tell me he's the one who killed this person. Really? I must leave our church. He's a killer. You see, because he does not have the heart to accept this kind of news. Are you with me? So betrayal, betrayal, there is a lot of people who are betraying others. And there are a lot of wives who have been betrayed by their husband. A lot of husbands have been betrayed by their wife. If you go to the court, the, our court of Rassenberg here, you will see the number of files for divorce. Divorce is an expression of betrayal. If there is a divorce, it means that somebody is betrayed. Right? I will show you. I will tell you what is loyalty mean and what betrayal mean. So if you see people divorcing, it means that somebody is betrayed. Somebody who was trusted to be faithful, somebody who was trusted to be a good wife, a good husband, has failed, has betrayed. That's why now people are going to fall. And I am telling you, in South Africa, there's a lot of divorce. Statistics South Africa is saying that divorce is mostly happening in the first two years of marriage. 80% of divorce happened in the first two years of marriage. I was shocked. There is somebody that I know who got married, got divorced three months after. And when I said divorced, paper signed, stamped after three months of marriage. Can you imagine that? What went wrong? What went wrong? Because in three months of marriage, this is the time of honey. This is the honeymoon. But what went wrong? What went wrong? Somebody betrayed. Somebody was holding a life that the other one didn't know. Was hiding something. They poof, someone out. Ah, but don't tell me about this. I did not fight for this. No, do you hear those, those kind of saying? I did not fight for this. Hey, what is this? I did not fight for this. Oh, betray. Betray. Hallelujah. So Jesus wants us to be faithful to him. He wants us to be faithful to the people that uh, are representing him in our families, in our society, in our churches. There are people that are representing God. We need to be faithful. Hallelujah. Now, what is loyalty? Loyalty. 
Loyalty is the quality or state of being loyal. Okay, I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> it's a state or quality of being loyal. But what is to be what is loyal? Loyal is someone who is reliable, true, and always. Somebody who is reliable, true, is somebody who is faithful to the oath or to the commitment or to the obligation. So loyalty is faithfulness or commitment to an obligation or to an oath that you have taken or to the responsibilities that you have accepted. Loyalty is being reliable, being true and trustworthy. So when I say that you are loyal, loyal, I don't know if I'm saying the word very well, English people, okay. If I say you are loyal, it means that you are true. You do not display two characters or you don't display two people. So you, you'll understand that to be disloyal is to be displaying something that you are not. So disloyalty is like playing a movie. What you are seeing in the movie, it's never true. It is a make. Up. That's why when we say makeup, you know makeup, makeup, <laughs> makeup is a form of disloyalty. <laughs> that is a makeup. It it made up. It is not that. Now, <laughs> I think I told you this. I saw a video, very interesting. A gentleman who got married. To a woman and then they go to honeymoon when they arrive there in the honeymoon they want to make themselves comfortable in the honeymoon the first thing the, the woman did is remove the, the wig because what wig eh? and then he was like whoa what is this the hair was somehow say so, okay I can take that one and then he removed the the eyelashes, eyelashes. and then he goes by, he removes the, he put also things in the eyes, you know, to make the eyes somehow remove that. And he, she washes the face. <laughs> and then the last one that makes the guy to collapse. She removed the teeth because the teeth also <laughs> falls teeth. After removing the teeth, the guy just collapsed. <laughs> because I can tell you, the face of the woman completely changed transformed. transformed it was no longer the woman she he filed for are you getting me this is this reality and this this loyal person is a person you think that this is what i get but in reality beyond that image there is something else are you with me and unfortunately we have in church think people like that i told you the other day that holiness is that holiness is the ability to be one to be the same at all time so if you look at god god is holy because god is the same at all time there is no time that you come to see god and then you're like oh you have changed he never changed the bible says is the same yesterday today and forever so being loyal is being true being loyal is being faithful to the oath and being committed to the obligations that you have taken. How many people here are not the people that we are seeing at home? How many people here in those they are somebody else? How many people here outside they are somebody else? They are not who we think that they are. You see, 
we need to be loyal. Our first loyalty need to be we need to be loyal to our master, Jesus Christ. What we see that we are must be who we are. We must not think that you are somebody until one day we discover, say, yo. You see, that thing that you are hiding, that can make us one day when we discover it, say, yo. It makes you to become disloyal to our master. And disloyal to us. Because you are telling us or you are showing us something that you are not. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, I always say it, say it here, the energy of appearing is always more than the energy of being. Amen. To be is easy. There's nothing to do. You just be. But to appear, it's difficult. That's why makeup takes time. No, I'm not saying that you shouldn't put makeup. I'm just taking it as an example. You know, yesterday, yesterday, I was talking to my wife's niece, you know, and uh, she was telling me that they had metric dance. Okay, I don't understand why they're having metric dance before them to make it for metric. I don't know what will happen if you don't make it. You're gonna make, have next year, you make another make it dance, or is it one on a lifetime? Not sure, anyway. Now, I was talking to her, then she told me, Papa, um, because I asked her, show me the pictures of your metric dance, because she was nicely dressed. I only saw one picture of her, I couldn't believe it was her, just so different. Then I said, can I have other pictures of your metric dance? She went to the phone, was looking, 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 then she said, Papa, his elder brother does the filming and taking pictures. Then he told me, she told me that I'm, my brother couldn't take my pictures because I was late, you know, on the time that we agreed for my brother to take me the picture. Then I asked her, what makes you late? I was shocked. I was shocked. She said, my makeup took one hour. Can you imagine? Make up. So to hide him, to transform her, to make another person, to make up. You see, unfortunately, people fall for this kind of things. You will fall for the, the, the makeup woman that at the end of the day, when now the woman come back as a woman in the morning, you can chase and say, hey, get out. Let me look for my wife. Say, no, it's me <laughs> with that makeup. You see how you, are, you, how you are laughing. It's exactly what is happening with disloyalty. When we are not loyal, the day we discover our real face, we feel that way. How many times you have been shocked because you found out now the true color of the brother or the true color of the sister or the true color of the husband or the true color of the leader. It is shocking, shocking. It is painful. Because all the time you have been enjoying something that was fake. All the time you have been with somebody who never been truthful to you. Who was actually playing with your emotions. Playing with your eyes. The good thing nowadays is the makeup goes with the skin tone, you know, with the development, at least we can bring back the makeup. But the problem with loyalty and trust, once it is broken, it is difficult to be regained. I was talking to another young lady who is having problem in a relationship. She's telling me, Pastor, but why uh, he cannot just forgive me and trust me now? I said, no. Trust has been broken. You need to win it again. And to win trust, to rewin trust, the energy will be more than to win trust. Are you getting me? So if you have broken trust, to get back that trust, you need more effort than before. 
Now he's telling me, but now the guy, every time I go to the mall, he's only thinking that I'm with somebody. I did it once, and they said, that is the problem. You have put something in his mind. So that is the problem. Beloved, let be loyal to our husband, loyal to our wife, loyal to our pastor, loyal to our leader. There are people who are selling their countries. They're not loyal to their countries. The people are selling their churches. They're not loyal to their church. When he goes out there, no, I don't understand. I don't get it. The church that you are busy criticizing from Monday to Sunday, from the first the day of the, year, the, the month to the last day, the first month of the year, to, but you still come to the church. And there are infant people, they still serve in that church. You, you understand the amount of curse you are accumulating on yourself. Because even as you cannot see, God will see you are not loyal. God will see that you are not loyal. When you are lifting up your hand and asking God, go do this to me, it is the opposite that is happening to you. There are people who got sick. There are people who got problems, who are losing things. Reason being, they are not loyal to where they are supposed to be loyal. That's why we want to speak about loyalty during this month of October. So that you understand why loyalty, where why people are becoming disloyal? What makes people disloyal? And why loyalty is important? You will learn how to identify disloyalty in your life and in the life of other people. Disloyal people are dangerous because they are like the hand of the enemy. They are like the, the how do you call them? The, what is this word? You know, somebody who is with you, but in reality, he belongs to the enemy. The spy. They're like spies. Not in plural, spies. <laughs> Not spices, spies. No, we have spies in the church. They are hand of the devil in the church. Every time he will come, he will make sure that you guys peace gone. When he goes here, he will say something, goes here, some something, you will start fighting. Like, ah, it's because he's a spy of the devil. And there are people who have been used by the devil, they are not even aware. But the devil is using them as instrument to destroy the church of the living God. Remember, beloved, there is no greater thing for God than souls. So everyone who destroys the souls, what Jesus say? Scandal will happen. But he said, woe or curse be the person through whom scandal are happening in church. And he said for that person, it is better for him to be hanging with a big stone and throw him in water. You know why God said I should put a stone? So that he may no longer come back. Because if they throw him in water without a stone, he do the stone, he can manage to come out. But they put him in a stone so that the stone must keep him there. So if you are a person that the devil is using to take people out of the church, to hurt the heart of people, people have left the church because of you, because of what you told them, because of what you have told them. Listen, I'm not saying that you should, what you are, but what I saw is that they true, it was the true, but what, what Jesus make you to be who? To be his witness or the witness of evilness? What I don't understand, I see people, he will go on, 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 on YouTube, he will take one hour of his YouTube time talking about the false pastor. First, pastor so, he's the false one. Pastor so, yeah, the proof. Pastor. Jesus never left us beyond to look to, 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 to speak about the false pastors. He left us beyond to speak about him, to be his witnesses. I don't have time to take, even if it is true, to take my phone and send the bad thing of pastors or the bad thing of churches. But I was not left behind for that. That is betraying my master. My master never said that among us, we will not have problems. He never said that. We will have problems. Isn't it that there is a say of the world that say, dirty cloth, they wash it in the family. Look at what we do. People don't believe in Christianity anymore. Because of us, sometimes people put on their status. 
pastor so and so, pastor so and so. You know when it's about the pastors, people are so eager. I don't understand that now the devil is using them. There was a brother who was looking at you. He was trusting you. He was just about to ask you, can we go to church next Sunday? But when you will just see that thing on your status, like, hey, shh. it was a mistake. Even him is the same. What you don't understand, when you, you, you betray your people, you are also put in the same blanket, the same basket. Because you are also a Christian. When they say there's no faithful Christian, you are also put there. Don't think that you, they put you aside, you are special. Even you, they don't trust you anymore. You must stand and be faithful to your master. One day, Peter, Jesus told him, You'll, you will deny me <laughs> three times. Peter was like, no, no, no. <laughs> They caught him somewhere. They say, you also, you're with him. You know why Peter denied Jesus? He denied him because he saw the beating they beat Jesus. The beating that young man received. Because Peter was monitoring all those things. He said, hey, this kind of beating, put naked. He said, ah, I would accept that. The problem with Peter, Peter was married. He had a reputation to protect. He was the, the husband of somebody. He was also uh, the, 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 I mean, he was the father of some people. So Peter said, ah, my reputation. <laughs> what the, you, uh, no, 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 I never, don't know that guy, don't know him. He betrayed his master <laughs> because of the pain of the master. If that, that day Jesus was glorified, and everything was going well. I'm telling you, if they say you were with him, he could have accepted. He refused because the, Jesus was in a bad corner. Loyalty is not only when everything goes well. Loyalty is even when things are wrong. When I've done wrong, and there's proof that I've done wrong, you stand by me and say, yes, he is our pastor. He has fallen. I still love him. I'm going to help him to stand. That is loyalty. How many times when your brother is on, is on difficulties, is down, what you say? You, you know, people always bring messages, declaration of people who come for burning the Bible church. We want to, dis, to tell you that we are distancing ourselves with Pastor Roger because he has fallen. <laughs> you don't understand. This is what Peter did. did. Peter, he distanced himself from Jesus in the day of problem of Jesus. When Jesus needed him the most, when he was in his weak point, when he needed people to fight for him, to stand for him, Peter, in front of everyone, he distanced himself from Jesus. He said, I, I don't know this guy. This is what you do when your brother is in trouble. You start, you distance yourself from your brother, and you start now nailing that brother together. What you don't understand, people will believe you more than the people of outside. Because you, you are the person of inside. This is the reason why when the, the, the male of the, 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 the chicken is what? A rooster. When the rooster started, Jesus looked at Peter from far, you see? Peter cried bitterly. The Bible says, he cried what? Bitterly. He said that I've betrayed my master. Me and Judah, there's no difference. There's no difference. How, how often have you betrayed people? Have you distanced yourself because the brother was in trouble? You don't want to be, uh, to be uh, together with him. You know, faithful people, I mean, loyal people will be with you. Say, yes, I believe he has done wrong. We're going to help him to come back. Jesus never said that will never fall. He is he's on the ground. We need to help him. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, those who are in the ground, do what? Help them to stand, but be careful for you to not fall with them. This is what the Bible says. The Bible never said that we should, we should leave them falling or we should run away from them. Our problem, we are so much disloyal. There's this false prophet 
I don't want to see next to me. Those people will say, you see, I told you, it's fake. I told you, this guy, I knew it. I knew it. What did you do when you knew it before? How did you go and see the brother and say, brother, this is what I know about you. Stop this. Why did you not bring back the brother on the way? You are waiting for him to do the scandal, for you to go everywhere. This loyal. You are not loyal. Be loyal to your wife. Protect the wife. Even if they told you that your wife has done wrong, for that time, fight for your wife first. Don't just go like, you see, this wife, I'm tired. You know, I'm, I don't know, sister, if you, you, you are available. I'm even trying to. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, brothers, be faithful to your wife. If somebody comes to say nonsense about your wife, stand. Not my wife. You know deeply that this is a weakness of my wife. But I defend my wife first. I'm loyal to my wife. When I go, I say, Mommy, Annie, what's going on? They, they stop this. Now it, it's starting to embarrass us. Don't go when they talk about your husband. Say, ah, that one. I, I knew, Papa, I knew. I'm even trying. What are you trying? Loyalty and disloyalty. Are you loyal? You see, it's not only being loyal to your pastor, but being loyal everywhere. There are people who are selling their country in the east part of the DRC. People are selling their country for money. They're selling the country. Listen, you may choose your wife, you may choose your husband, but you cannot choose your country. God will impose you that country. That is, no matter how bad it is, that is the country God gave you. Somebody was saying, you see this country is so bad, let's just sell it. You know, distribute the money and everyone will go in his own place. Even now. Do you understand that? That your, your country is sacred. South Africa is sacred. We cannot just sell South Africa and distribute the money and go. No. So all this month will speak about Loyalty and disloyalty. So that you may understand. When people come to you and start telling you things about your church. Hey, did you see that? Did you see the pastor? This, 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 uh, uh, um, suit was, it's even short. You know, tell him, hey, I'm loyal to my pastor. If the, 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 the suit is short, I'm going to go buy for him another one. He said, hey, I saw it. He, saw, he was even wearing this. Stop mocking what God has given you. Value it. Protect it. Be loyal to it. Now, as I will, so, we'll, we'll see it later on, being loyal does not exclude reproach and criticism which, can, which must be constructive criticism. It's not because I'm loyal that I cannot talk to the person who does wrong. Or I can, I must accept, or, or, or um, how can I say, condole the wrong. No, I cannot condole the wrong. I must protect from outside. When I come, I say, brother, this is wrong. We should stop this. It doesn't value us. It doesn't give us the level that we need to have. Hallelujah. Can you rise up on our feet so that we can pray? Thank you, Jesus. to ask God tell him Lord in many instances I have been disloyal disloyal to you my Lord disloyal to my spiritual leaders disloyal to my state leaders disloyal to my husband my wife my parent my children Disloyal to my friends. I've been telling them things that I am not. I've been not truthful. Let us God to forgive us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am praying for you to forgive me. For every time I've been disloyal. Disloyal to my wife. Disloyal to my children. Disloyal to this congregation. 
Father, I come to you to ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for every time I've been disloyal to my state authorities. Lord, forgive me for every disloyalties that I've displayed, Lord. Even those that I was not aware that I've been disloyal, you want us, O oh Lord, to be without reproach. The Bible says, a man who wants to be a leader must be a man without reproach. Forgive me, Lord, for whatever I've done that did not honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now I want you to pray. Tell him, Lord, I want to be loyal. No matter how it takes. You know, being loyal is also accepting to get dirty with your brother. When he get dirty, it may come to you. But because you are loyal to him, loyal to her, you will take that dirty and accept that, that pain. Peter refused to get dirty with Jesus when Jesus was in the dirty cloth. That is loyalty. To accept to go through pain together with the person. Sometimes to be humiliated with the person. Now tell the, tell the Lord, help me. Because I can do all things through you, Jesus. Let's pray to the Lord. Father, I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Help me to be royal. Help me to accept some time to go, mighty God, through dirtiness, almighty God. To be, to accept, to be, to get dirty for the brother, for the sister, being royal to the person. Father, help me. Help the church. Help the Bible church. Help the body of Christ. Because many times we were not able to do that, Lord. Lord, we are praying for your help. We are praying for your assistance, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we'll see it during the, um, the Adam Wednesdays that there is a spirit of betrayal. There is a demon that comes. We'll, so, we'll see that somebody in the Bible was... Uh, Possessed by that spirit of betrayal. This is how we understand so that there is a spirit of betrayal. So we're going to stand against every form of demonic betrayal that can come and possess us or come and push us or come and confuse us. Let's stand against that spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I stand against the spirit of betrayal in my life, the spirit of betrayal in my church, the spirit of betrayal in my family. Father, I stand. I resist the spirit of betrayal in the name of Jesus. Every demonic power, every satanic power, of betrayal. Lord, I stand against that spirit. I command that spirit to go. You demon of the betrayal. You satan of betrayal. Go away in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your people be free. Let your people be free. Let my life be free. Let yourself be free from every satanic spirit of betrayal. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now believe that you are free. Say this after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me, I've betrayed so many, I've betrayed you, but today I am coming back to you, forgive me Lord, help me, help me to be loyal to you, to be loyal to my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, help me to be myself, at all time for your glory in Jesus name praise God now you will see the spirit of the Lord will be working in you every time you will stand by those that you need to be faithful to no matter what you will stand by them hallelujah even when they will be in the dirty cloth you will accept to stand by them because that is being a lawyer you can't just show your loyalty when everything is okay even when things are difficult, you need to still be loyal. Amen. Now, if you brought your offering, 